Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't think I need to do any more introductions or anything along those lines because uh, we've been here for two days, but I want to greet all of you this night with the precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so let us go right into the Word of God because the time that is before us is very limited. So for that reason, let's go right into the Word of God, the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 8. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number 8, verse number 22 to 26. This is a very, very, very familiar scripture. It says like this, they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes, he put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Pete, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, do not go into the village. Uh, when we live, uh, there's a few things that I wanted to share with you, but um, my, like I said, my time is very limited, so I'm going to go right into the Word of God. When, um, when Jesus is talking about this particular scripture right here, we will notice that, you know, if you were to think about this from a chronological perspective, and uh, all the scriptures that we see in the Gospels have not been written in chronological uh, perspectives as well. But it was more to maintain a thought process that we see before us. And in all of these questions that see, there's a question that comes before this thing about the feeding of the, of the, uh, of the thousands. And after this, there's also a conversation that Jesus has concerning the fact that who do you men say that I am. In all of that, the whole thing that we are trying to, that Jesus is trying to imply to the, to the people or to his audience is the fact that we need to see him the way we need to see him. So when, when we see that the terminology that is used in the Greek uh, uh, language is the term scopa, or do you see what I see? And in between these two messages is nestled in here another story about a blind man. Jesus is trying to share this concept of being seen. The problem that we have in today's day and age is that we can walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, pray to Jesus, yet we cannot possibly see and we can possibly also miss out on Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you want to become a generational church, we have to recognize what is it that Jesus or what is it that God is trying to discuss with us in this season. Let me tell you something. Our forefathers had a particular type of ministry. That was great in that century. That was good at that very moment in time. But when we try to transcribe that into today's time, we also need to make sure do we see what Jesus wants us to see. A few things really quickly and I will get out of your way this morning, uh, this evening. One of the things that we see in this also, we see the story of some men that is bringing a blind man to Jesus. We got to understand one thing, for a church to be thriving, a church to become who it is and what it is, we have to base our understanding on the basic thought process of relationships. From the beginning, from the book of Genesis, all the way to the book of Revelation, it is talking about, there's a lot of conversation, or God put, the Holy Spirit puts a lot of emphasis on relationships. And when that relationships come, for example, God, uh, uh, when and he talks to Adam. He sees Adam and he tells Adam, hey Adam, it is not good for you to be alone. It is, you need to get a soulmate and a helpmate. You would think that the next thing that God does would be to take him before and put him to sleep and bring Eve out of him. But no, the next thing that God does was to bring him in front of a bunch of animals and make sure that he names all these animals. In other words, I am thinking in my imagination, Every animal is walking by. Every animal is walking by. He, Adam looks at this animal and, and looks at this animal and calls it a name for whatever, however he was reasoning to call that name. But he also was, go, God was putting him through a process to see and to share one thing with him. That all these things that you see in front of you is not for you. Young people, let me tell you something really quickly. Not every person that walks in front of you who struts his stuff in front of you is for you. 
You got to understand one thing. When God has called and chosen someone specifically for you, you got to recognize that is the human calling of God. When we come into the church also, it is all about relationships. Who are we hanging out with? There's, there's something peculiar that I want to talk to you about. Because you got to understand one thing. When there is a man, there's a, a, a man that had a weakness. There was a, a, a man that was blind. He was depending on his friends to bring them. And all of a sudden that you will see one thing. That he was being brought forth and these men were helping them out. Do you recognize something special, spe special about this kind of person? This kind of person is one of the person that, you know what? He does not have any sight. But there were, there were people that were carrying him. To Jesus. The actual terminology that we see in that whole thing is like this. That he was being dragged to. The Bible says in English that they brought him to Jesus. But the original terminology says that you know what? They dragged this man to Jesus. He has a weakness. He has a blind spot. He has a situation in his life. But yet they were surrounding himself with people that were willing to drag him to the presence of Jesus and beg to Jesus. Let me tell you something, child of God. Every generation has problems. Every generation has weaknesses. When one generation is passing and the other generation takes over, we might think that we got everything together. Like we got our ducks in a row. But let me tell you something, child of God. As long as we are human, we got weaknesses. You know what? The older people got weaknesses and the younger people got weaknesses. But we need to be a church that is willing to bring people in spite of their weaknesses. Drag them to the presence of Jesus and beg them. Relationships matter in the context of the church. What we have today is people that are not willing to carry each other. That is not willing to carry each other's burdens and weaknesses to the presence of God. But rather when they come into the house of God, they'll say a few words and they say it's all over. Generations cannot be just decided by age and all that stuff, but of course, generations are also different thought processes. There are weak vessels in your church. There are weak young people. There are weak old people. Not just physically or any other. We need to have a mentality. And that mentality should be that we are willing to drag them to the presence of Jesus. Do you recognize in all of this that that blind man never says that I want to be brought to Jesus? Well, hey, can you help me out with taking me to Jesus? Or hey, I think Jesus is coming and crediting him a meeting here. Can you take me there so you can help? me no these friends these people recognized the need that they, he had and they were willing to drag him to the pre, to the presence of Jesus like it was their own problem let me go one step further these four men or these men that were bringing this blind man had something that this blind man did not have you know what that was sight എനിക്കുള്ള അനുഗ്രഹവും എനിക്കുള്ള കഴിവും എൻ്റെ കൂട്ടു സഹോദരന് വേണം എന്നുള്ള ചിന്താഗതിയിൽ അവൻ ചോദിക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേയും അവൻ ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേയും ദൈവസന്നിധിയിൽ വലിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് പോകുക എന്നുള്ളൊരു കാഴ്ചപ്പാടാണ് ഈ ജനത്തോടെ ദൈവസഭയിൽ ഇതുപോലുള്ള ജനങ്ങൾ ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കണം അവരുടെ വിളിക്ക് വേണ്ടി കാത്തിരിക്കുകയല്ല അവരുടെ ആവശ്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടി കാത്തിരിക്കുക അല്ല ഞാൻ ഇച്ചിരി ഉന്നതനായിട്ട് ഇരിക്കട്ടെ അവൻ ഇച്ചിരി കുറഞ്ഞിരിക്കട്ടെ എന്നുള്ള ചിന്താഗതിയല്ല എൻ്റെ കൂട്ടു സഹോദരൻ എൻ്റെ കുടുംബം എൻ്റെ കൂട്ടായ്മ ഒരൊറ്റ രക്ത ഒരു അപ്പത്തിൻ്റെ അവകാശിയായി നിൽക്കുമ്പോൾ എനിക്കൊരു കാഴ്ച പാടുണ്ട് ആ കാഴ്ചപ്പാടെന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എൻ്റെ കൂട്ടു സഹോദരം എനിക്കുള്ള നന്മയിലും അവൻ അനുഭവിക്കണം അവൻ കുരുടനായിരിക്കും അവന് കണ്ണു കാണത്തിലായിരിക്കും അവൻ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു പ്രയാസമുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ അനുഭവിക്കുന്ന സന്തോഷവും അവനും അനുഭവിക്കണം ബട്ട് ടുഡേ വി ഹാവ് ഇൻ ദ ചർച്ച് ഈസ് ഹേ ഹൗ ക്യാൻ ബി ബി ബെറർ ദൻ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഗായ് ഹൗ ക്യാൻ ബി ബി ബെറർ ദൻ ദി അദർ ഗായ് ഞാൻ എങ്ങനെ പൊങ്ങിയിരിക്കും അവൻ ഇച്ചിരി താന്നാലും കുഴപ്പമില്ല ഞാൻ എങ്ങനെ പൊങ്ങിയിരിക്കും എന്നുള്ള ചിന്ത ദാറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് വാട്ട് ഗോഡ് ഹസ് കോൾഡ് ഹസ് ഫോർ ഇഫ് യു ഹാവ് ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് this is the ministry of intercession this is the ministry of intercession intercession is you know what intercession is a ministry that you are willing to take over somebody's issue as if it was your own without his invitation 
Intercession is a ministry that you are willing to take over somebody else's issue as if it was your own without their invitation. Many a times we go to intercession based on what somebody else tells us or based on the time the me intercessory meeting. No child of God, we have to be a church that is willing to take somebody else's problem, somebody else's issue, somebody else's weaknesses. It might be older person, a younger person, whatever it might be. Take it to the presence of Jesus and Beg Jesus to touch his life. That we will all be on the same playing field. I'm going to skip across real quickly because I have three more minutes to go. And I want to skip across the field real quickly. At the very end of it all says, you see what Jesus did. Jesus spit on his eyes and, and fixed his eyes. And those are all different things that I want to share about. But I want to go past all that and go to the last verse. And the Bible says like this. That in, in, uh, in verse number 26, he says like this, Jesus sent him home saying, don't go into the village. Don't go back into the village. I was asking that one thing about to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, why would you not want this big miracle? Why wouldn't you want this great, amazing blessing? Why wouldn't you want to tell the whole world exactly what is it that you did with this blind man? Good for it. Jesus is saying one thing here. You got to understand one thing. Don't go back into that village to say anything. Why not, Jesus? Don't you really want to be in a place where your name will be glorified? This boy's got a testimony and your name will be lifted up. People will be drawn to you. And the Holy Spirit reminded me one thing. The people in that town already knew who this man was. They already knew that he was blind. A blind man walks like this. Right? When a man gets healed, he's not going to walk like this. He's going to walk straight. His walk was going to be the biggest testimony that the people in Bethsaida was going to know about. Sometimes we are always that group of people that we want to preach and teach all the things about what God has done in our lives. Sometimes we just need to shut our mouth and walk the walk in our lives so that the world will see that, you know what, there was something different about that fellow. Now that man has been transformed and he has been healed by the healing touch of Jesus Christ. We should, you know, if you were to give a testimony, if you were to go to do a crusade, it was 40 minutes of your time. But when you decide to st step up and walk up and walk with the healing that God has given, trust me, it is a testimony of a lifetime. It is easy for us to preach up a testimony, but it is hard for us to walk a testimony. The church needs to be in a place where we are willing to walk our testimony. But today we all want the pulpit and the microphone without the walk. We all want the pulpit and the microphone without the walk. Ever wonder why the church is failing today? The church is failing because we are all about the talk and not enough about the walk. We are all about the talk and not enough about the the walk. My prayer is that in the days to come that God would give us an, a, a group of people and that we would be a people that is willing to lift the, my fellow brother, my fellow sister up to the level and the understanding and the anointing that I have that we would not put a cap on somebody else's anointing, somebody else's gifting, that we would be a church that is willing to say, brother, I have this blessing. You need to be at the same level of my blessing. I have this great thing, revelation. You need to be at the same level of that revelation and we are willing to bring them and bring them into the presence of Jesus and beg them without the invitation of the one that is in need.
അതാണ് ദൈവസഭയിലേക്കുള്ള ശുശ്രൂഷ കൂട്ടു സഹോദരൻ്റെ ആവശ്യത്തിന് വേണ്ടി എൻ്റെ ആവശ്യത്തിന് തുല്യമായി ഞാൻ ഏറ്റെടുത്തിട്ട് അവന് സൗഖ്യം പ്രാപിക്കുന്നവരെ ദൈവസന്നിധിയിൽ കണ്ണുനീരോട് കരയുന്നതാണ് ദൈവസഭയുടെ ശുശ്രൂഷ and then he comes and like i said skip across the field real quick and that very thing about that is that we should have a testimony deva sabhayil aalkar nirayano nammal porthu poganam nammada sakshyamayi agathalla porthu poi nammada jeevitham kandonde sakshyam avaru they should they should come to jesus christ based on the testimony that we have what is the walk of our church today I'm talking about the global church I'm not talking about the church in Ireland I'm talking about the ch- global church today will the world see that there is something different about that man that woman that church because you know what signs and wonders are happening in that church all kinds of blessings are happening in that church because they don't just talk about Jesus they also walk out this Christian life young people I want to tell you something you know what even if you don't go out there and give one tract just live even if you don't go out there and give one tract just live your life is the greatest tract that the rest of the world can see and experience your life our lives are the greatest tool of the gospel that anybody else can see every eye closed every head bowed let's go to the presence of god real quick father in heaven we thank you hallelujah let's just go to this presence real quickly ഹാലലൂയ ഹാലലൂ ഇന്ന് രാത്രി കാലം നമ്മുടെ ആദരങ്ങൾ തുറന്ന് നമുക്ക് ദൈവസനത്തിലായിരിക്കാം ഹാലലൂയ 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 Hallelujah spirit of the living God we come before you we come before you Lord God we thank you for your blessings we thank you for your grace we thank you for your power oh spirit of God we pray Lord God that you would make us and transform us into a church Lord God that would intercede on the behalf of the weak that is in our community it might be a younger person it might be an older person but whatever it might be Lord God that we would be able to look beyond their faults and the weaknesses and bring them and beg for them on your presence of the uh, the presence of your son lord god make us that church where we care about people the way you cared about us that you would send your only begotten son into this world and die he would give his ult- pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we would have life we pray lord god that we would be a church that just doesn't talk the talk but we also walk the walk based on how the world would see what you have done in our life